So we're now ready for the most interesting part of our rodeo, which is extracting values from the data frame. So um, uh, what we want is we want to look at the entire column vector and depending on a particular logical condition, filter out certain values. And uh, as the first sentence here says, um, you know, a good trick to do this only as to avoid to write, to have to write the entire um, name hot dogs dollar calories for that vector every time is to store it into a, in a short intermediate object. That's the only thing that happens here. And um, that'll help us to uh, formulate logical conditions like this one with just simply less space. So uh, the question is how many hot dog types have, and this is our logical condition, less than 300 and more than 250 milligrams of sodium. First thing is we we're going to, going to uh, store this uh, sodium vector following the previous example, hot dogs, dollar, sodium. Remember the, um, um, let's put down here what it is, store the sodium values of all hot dogs, y, and uh, the result of this will be uh, silent. It just happens. And then uh, let's add another one. And now we're looking for the logical condition. We can now use Y and say we want to have all sodium vector values that are greater 300 and logical and um, that are smaller, uh, sorry, less than 300 and greater than 250. You can see such a question, of course, you need to check that the values in the data set actually conform to this unit, but in this case they do. Um, so if I, if I enter this, um, you can guess what this will yield. It's a logical operator, two logical operators, small, three actually, smaller, greater, and and, and the result, of course, will be a logical vector, looks like this which you don't want to have to deal with right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this vector as an index vector for our, um, for our, to solve our task. So index is a vector. Um, the index values, the values of index are true when condition is fulfilled. Yeah. And the next step is to um, compute the length of the subvector of y for which this condition is true. So now our trick is we take the entire vector and we index it by index. This only gives two values. That's not the answer, because the complete answer was how many. Of course, we can see it, but um, can I answer the uh, question completely? We get this by taking the length of y in this. We could actually make it, let's make it a little easier. Let's call this y1. Um, so we just compute it, store it in, in, in here, and then we can use y1 so this is the uh, length of the subvector. There's another way of doing this, and I'm um, just going to add it for completeness. Another way of doing it is to not take the go over the values, but simply use the index vector right away and type which function of index. The which function. Uh, automatically extracts only those arguments, those indices, which are true and disregards all the others. Now, the nice thing about which is that it um, allows NAs and omits them automatically. So it disregards all potential NAs, which we don't have here. And I'm just going to compute this and which index uh, gives you immediately the indices, not the values for which this is true. And of course, if you I use the length function on this, get the right answer as well. We're almost done. 
Next question is, um, we're going to sort of go one level deeper and ask what type of hot dogs are these? So we have another column, type column. And in this case, we could store it in a vector again, but we only have one operation to do. So we can simply um, use the uh, accessor operator right away. So we're going to access all values of type. And we index them according to the condition where y is equal y1. So which values of the original total vector uh, are identical to the subvector? And the answer is beef. <laughs>